What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about happy campers. So I just randomly uh, found out about this movie a couple of weeks ago. Basically, um, <clears throat> you know, I've been stacking up some Amazon gift cards. I got like $90 worth of Amazon gift cards. So I've been, you know, cashing out on TV shows and movies, stuff that I can't find on other streaming services or stuff that I don't want to uh, buy on Blu-ray or DVD for like 50 bucks. Like Amazon g gets at like a lot of stuff that is a little bit harder to find. So I've just been browsing Amazon looking for cool stuff to watch and you know it's the uh, it's the summertime. I'm a sucker for any uh, summer movie, especially a nice summer camp movie. So I just randomly came across this movie, Happy Campers. Um, it's it's pretty obscure. It was just a little direct to DVD movie that came out back in 2001. And I guess it was like, I think it was shelled for, for a couple years actually. And you know, it, it, Maybe it was going to get a theatrical release, but they're just, it was hard to find distribution, so they just uh, released it direct to DVD. But yeah, this movie, I've like, I ne had never even heard of it previously, and I just came across it. I'm like, oh, Justin Long is in this, uh, Brad Redfell is in this, and it's a little summer camp comedy. It's rated R. I'm like, let me check this out. So, um, yeah, uh, I, 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 it was on my list to check out, and then the reason I ch I checked it out is because I was waiting for the like uh, like the official start of summer to wa to start watching uh, summer movies because I'm like weird like that nowadays. Like, if people if people are familiar with the channel, you know, during Christmas time I do all the Christmas movies. October I do Halloween related movies like. Nowadays, I, I save uh, specific movies for specific times of the year because it, I don't know, it, it kind of, uh, kind of makes me value them more. It's like, it's like I'm saving them and, and it's like a nice little treat. It's like a nice little reward. And then you get to like go through the year and experience the different, um, seasons and you get to like really experience the year like I used to I used to not care I used to like nothing was sacred I would watch any movie anytime I would watch uh the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on Christmas like I did that once I would watch uh John Carpenter's original Halloween like you know five times a year I would watch it in in the winter whatever but now I like to watch stuff um you know during the season in which it takes place or goes along with because I don't know it's just kind of like a fun little fun little um festive thing you know you you actually you get to fully like immerse yourself in the season but anyways uh I was like I'm such like a loser I was like googling when is the official first day of summer in 2024 and it was like it was like June 20th so I, I, I wasn't going to watch any uh, summer camp movies or summer movies until June 20th. And like June 20th hit, and I'm like, let's go. We're doing summer camp movies. So I, I, uh, I'm i kind of burnt out with horror movies. I mean, of course, I'm still going to do horror movies, but I just did like f f a whole horror franchise on here. So I'm like, let me switch it up, do a little comedy. So I, I checked out Happy Campers. And to be honest... Um, I was not a huge fan of this, but it was by no means a bad movie. It was just not my thing, not my cup of tea. There, there It had some, uh, you know, good stuff going on. There was some stuff that I liked about it, but overall, this movie was, was just not really my thing. So, the, uh, the plot focuses around this, this group of camp counselors and they're all uh, college freshmen, and uh, their their camp director. He actually he gets he's played by uh, Peter Stormare, 
who, you know, he was like the crazy guy in Fargo. He's been in a bunch of stuff. I think he was in that whole like Black Ops 2 uh, ad campaign, which shouts out Black Ops 2. That's, that's a pretty good uh, game, like that buried zombies map. That was a fantastic zombies map. But anyways, uh, the, the, the camp director played by Peter Stormare, he is struck by lightning and he's pretty much out of commission for the rest of the movie. He can't, he can't function. He's all messed up. So now these, these, uh, young college kids are in charge of the whole camp and throughout the rest of the movie, they're trying to run the camp. They're trying to keep these kids in line. There's, you know, all this hectic stuff going on that they're trying to navigate and they're trying to navigate all these relationships, all these uh, love interests start, you know, all these, these, these romances start, uh, you know, sparking and there's all these crazy love triangles and, and yeah, uh, these, these young college kids are trying to navigate all these new relationships, all this, you know, relationship drama, all these love triangles and also run the camp by themselves. So that is uh, the basic plot summary. So first things first, getting into some stuff that I did not like. Um, I didn't think this movie had a lot of story and it, it didn't really have like a, like a focus story. It was kind of un, unbalanced. Like there wasn't really a main character like each character kind of had their own subplot and story and they like narrated part of the movie and and Brad Renfro's character Wichita was he was kind of the main character but not really and just some of the the character like once it came to like the end of the movie and we got their resolution I just like I didn't care because they weren't built up as much but at the same time like the it wasn't built up where there was really a main character in my opinion but then you know we had like all all these uh different resolutions so like these different little subplots with all the characters and i just i wasn't super interested or invested um also um you know some of the some of the uh the comedy did not work for me. I thought quite a bit of the comedy was good. I thought like the characters all kind of had their own shtick and they were all kind of uh, wacky, but some some of the comedy was like a little too quirky for me and uh, it just, it didn't work. It just wasn't, it wasn't my cup of tea, like I said earlier, but yeah, the main, the main thing is, is that I just thought this movie did not have a lot of story. And the story was kind of unfocused. It jumped around between all these different characters. So it was kind of jarring. And, and it was hard for me to like really care throughout uh, you know the whole movie. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have for negatives. That's why the movie didn't work for me overall. But there was um, a lot of stuff that I did like getting into just some random points. I, I really liked uh, Brad Renfro's character, Wichita. He's like this, this brooding, mysterious, philosophical type of guy. And every single uh, person at the camp wants him, like all the girls want him. And there's this one uh, gay character, Jasper, even, even he uh, wants Wichita, like everyone wants Wichita. And it's, it's funny because, you know, like every, everything he says, everyone a acts like it's so deep and, and so profound and it kind of is, but it's not that deep. So that's, you know, that's, it's pretty funny. And, uh, you know, I, I had a, like an experience with that. There's this one, uh, like girl that I was dating and I would just say stuff that it wasn't really that deep but it was just not like surface level small talk. And she's like, wow, you're like so deep. You like, you have such like deep conversations. And I was like, 
I was like, are you joking me? Are you serious right now? Is this real life? So like, I thought of that when, uh, when, when I was watching this movie, but yeah, when you're young like that, if you just, if you say anything besides like, uh, you know, like if, if you're talking about anything besides just like basic small talk, like, Hey, did you see the, the weather report today? Hey, did you see the sports, the sports match? That was crazy. That was wild. Like if you say anything besides that, if you say anything kind of alternative or, you know, philosophical, like when you're like 19 years old, girls just think you're like, wow, he's mysterious. I don't, he's like, he's like a vampire. You, he, I don't, I don't know what's up with him. He's just, he's just brooding in the corner. Like, I want to pick his brain. I want to, I want to know what he's thinking. Like he's, He's alternative, dude. He lives an alternative lifestyle. That dude's crazy. But anyways, I thought Wichita's character was funny and everyone's reaction to him, like how everyone was obsessed with him, everyone wanted him, and they acted like he was like, everything he said was just so profound and he was he was just so deep and he was this like intellectual, which he kind of was, but at the same time, like he wasn't, he, he wasn't saying anything that, you know, profound. So I liked his character. Everything around his character was funny. And uh, it was funny too because, you know, he's usually this this mysterious, detached individual. And then he's he starts falling for this girl who's pretty much like his polar opposite. She's a total, like he's more chaotic and just kind of beats to his own drum. And, and she is more like, uh, you know, regulated, she's very religious, she's a rule follower, so they're, they're complete opposites, and he starts falling for her, and he, he starts, like, having emotions, and he just, he can't deal, he's like, it's like, what is this, like, what am I having, feelings, like, what is this, what, what are these, what is this, like, what's going on, like, I'm starting to feel stuff, I'm starting to, like, I don't know, I don't, what is this, and, uh, I just, I thought that was kind of funny, um, that like, yeah, he just, he starts like having emotions and feelings and he, and he can't deal. Um, yeah, he just like, he just like can't open up. He can only be this like mysterious individual. So yeah, everything around his character, uh, was, was pretty darn funny. And I really liked his character. Um, another, another point that I want to get into is, uh, so Justin Justin Long's character, he he plays this character named Donald, and he's he's kind of uh, they say he's like a nerd, and he says he's he like people view him as a nerd, but he thinks he's uh you know like charismatic and and intelligent, which I mean yeah nerds aren't typically charismatic, but I mean isn't isn't aren't nerds stereotypical, stereotyp, stereotypically intelligent. So like when he said, and like, I'm not a nerd, I'm actually intelligent. Like, well, nerds are, are usually are, uh, you know, like intelligent, like not, you know, like, um, like that's like the stereotype, you know? But, uh, but anyways, when he was saying that, so yeah, his character is like, kind of like a nerd and he's like, you know, everyone else is getting action, but he's like a virgin, he can't get any and he's like trying to shoot his shot at all these different girls and it's just like not happening for, happening for him. And uh, I liked his character too, he was pretty likable, but uh, basically when he was saying that like, I'm a charismatic, intelligent guy trapped in a nerd's body, I, I feel like, I feel like I kind of related to that because like I, I got like the the clean cut look going on you know I got that that clean uh, haircut like when I'm when I'm you know just walking around town I'm rocking like pastel shorts I'm rocking uh, khaki shorts you know above the knee you know got the shorts high up like straight up I'm a suburban I'm, I'm a suburban dude shouts out Kodak Black. I'm a suburban now, you know? But anyways, uh, I kind of have that aesthetic where, you know, I, 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 I clean shaven, I got that clean short haircut, 
parted to the side, business, uh, business uh, professional, and then I, I'm rocking like khaki pants on the reg. So I kind of have that. Uh, it, you could you could argue that I kind of have that nerdy look. Like I swear to God, people, customers at my work, they're all these. Uh, a lot of the customers are like people with uh they're like in biker clubs and they're these like bikers and they're wearing leather jackets and leather vests and they have like neck tattoos of spiders and they have like you know teardrop tattoos and and uh you know that like i've um you you could say i have like more of like a clean cut look than them and they're always like they always come in they're like hey man you know you know who you look like they're like I'm like, who? Who do I look like? And they're like, man, you look like Sheldon off of Big Bang Theory. And they, they, like, they're they're throwing shade. They're hating, you know, because I, I always say this to my coworkers. I'm like, I'm like, they're throwing shade. I'm like, that's not cool. And then my coworkers are like, well, you know, the actor who plays Sheldon, he's a handsome guy and he's a cool character on the show. But I'm like, yeah, but they're saying, I'm like, that's like a like a nerd show. That's like. I mean, I'm not saying nerds watch it, but the characters are nerds. I'm like, I'm like, they're straight calling me a nerd to my face, but I can't do anything because I'm in the workplace and those fools are in biker clubs. So they're probably, you know, they would, they would F me up. I can't do anything. So, uh, I definitely, I definitely related to that. Like, I feel like I'm a, a witty, funny, uh, charismatic individual. I'm not like, you know, like I'm, I'm like I think I think I'm cool personally, which that that's probably corny to like say. Like I think I'm cool. Like if you say that you're cool yourself, like that's like kind of like making a nickname for yourself. It's just like it's lame. It becomes lame. But like I think I'm like a cool and funny individual. But like surface level, I might like to to someone who's like just meeting me. I might kind of look like a nerd, like come through with this this haircut and the khaki pants. Like they probably think I'm like a square. They probably think I'm like a undercover police officer. So I really uh, related to that that line when Justin Long's character Donald was like, "I'm I'm a I'm a witty, intelligent dude trapped in a nerd's body." So that line was great. And like I said, I liked his character towards the end of the movie. Uh, he just you know, they, they, they had like condoms on condoms. They had an entire uh, like shelf stacked with probably 50 boxes of condoms because, you know, everyone in this movie, they were getting busy. They're, you know, young kids at summer camp, you know, that it comes with the territory. Like they, they were getting busy on the reg, like all kinds of activities were going on. People were, you know, people were getting intimate with it. So basically they had all, all these condoms and Justin Long's character was was mad because he wasn't getting any so he just like gathers up all the kids and they put on war paint and they're just using all the condoms as uh as as water balloons and they're they're just like throwing them at all the people who are like actually uh are in relationships and you know getting busy and i thought that was really funny and the one guy i th I, I forgot there's this one like macho character and he gets hit with a water balloon and i forgot if it was in his eye or in his mouth he's like Ah, ah, I got spermicidal lube in my eye. Ah, so that, uh, that whole sequence towards the end was really funny. And yeah, Justin Long's character, Donald, he was great. But yeah, I wanted to bring up that one line because I kind of, uh, related to that. And then, uh, my last couple points here are, uh, I thought, I, I thought the, the camp setting in this was fantastic. It was set at a beautiful lake. All of the, you know, interior shots, like in the mess hall, everything. It it really felt like camp. Uh, there was like quite a few scenes just out in the woods. The setting, the camp setting, was phenomenal in this movie. Um, also, in terms of like the the aesthetic uh, aspects of the movie, the lighting and the color grading in this movie were really good. Um, a lot of the the nighttime shots in the forest had this kind of blue hue to them. I don't know if that was uh, the way it was color graded or that was because, uh, you know, lighting. But it, it looked really cool. It had a unique look. And I thought e even a lot of the interior shots had a unique 
look to them like they were just they were kind of lit in a unique way where all of the all of the interior shots looked they they almost had like a kind of like a dark hue to them and like all all the lights in the background kind of had like a glow to them like subtle like subtle though but like yeah the way they lit this movie and color graded it was great this movie had a great look and speaking of the camp setting in the lake uh something that was kind of like a wtf moment is uh they were having all this bad weather at one point in the movie and they were talking about it was because of a hurricane and i was just like i was i was like okay so this is this is a summer camp at a lake how how is how is a how is a hurricane uh affecting them you know like they're probably this is it's a lake setting it's you see like pine trees it's not like we're seeing palm trees it's not a tropical setting this is this is like a a lake setting probably somewhere in the midwest and then they're talking about oh yeah we got all this messed up weather right now because of the hurricane like if even if there is a hurricane it's probably miles and miles and miles away like maybe there is maybe they are close to the ocean i don't know but i just thought that was i, I thought that was weird uh that that they're at this uh you know this what looks like a summer camp that's at a lake somewhere in the the midwest and they're talking about the weather is messed up due to a hurricane i don't know Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I got it wrong. Maybe they were actually in Miami and I, they just, uh, you know, they got pine trees and beautiful uh, lakes there. I mean, they do have lakes in, you know, more tropical states, but you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, I was like, this, this does not look like a, a setting that would be anywhere near a big ocean and a hurricane, like. I don't know how they're affected by that. But anyways, uh, I don't know. That was just a WTF moment. It didn't, it didn't uh, ruin the movie for me. I just, I, like, I don't really care at the end of the day, but I just thought I was, I, I'm just confused. Maybe I'm a simpleton. Maybe I got it wrong. Uh, maybe they're, they're, they're posted up at a tropical island resort. I don't know. But anyways, that was the last point that I wanted to bring up. So now I'm going to get into my recommendation. And I'm going to head out. So, like I said, uh, this wasn't a bad movie by any means. And there, it did have some, some fun stuff going for it. But overall, it just didn't, it didn't work for me. I wasn't really uh, engaged with the movie. I wasn't really invested in any of the character, in most of the characters' stories. So, uh, you know, this movie isn't really available anywhere for free anyways. So I would just say skip this one. Um, you know, there's there's better uh, summer camp comedies. But hey, maybe one day if it did, you know, come on streaming for free, I would wa I would watch it for free. But I would definitely uh, not recommend like going out and paying for this. It's 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 not worth it. It's just it's just okay. So um, that's been my recommendation, and that has been my review of Happy Campers. Thank you all very much for watching and peace out.